What guitar is cool enough that it would make me buy new rather than used? So in my adult life, for 15 years, I've bought hundreds, probably thousands of guitars at this point. So I've only, I can only think of about four guitars that I've purchased new during that time. But I have a guitar coming today that is a brand new guitar. This video is gonna be me waiting for my new guitar, revealing what it is, unboxing it. You're gonna see my reactions as I open it up, as I play it for the first time. And then we'll talk a little bit about their brand and their story and why. I think that this brand is one of the absolute coolest guitars and it is something that, it is a brand that I just identify with so deeply at the core of who they are. Let's go upstairs. I'm gonna keep working, but I'm gonna set up my camera and I'm gonna wait for the FedEx truck to show up because I'm super excited to show you guys this guitar. Yo ho ho, it is finally here. Here it is. This is kind of a giveaway. Inside this box is a Guild M20. I have loved these guitars uh, for a long time. I had a chance and I missed it, I blew it, in 2006 to buy one of these. There was an original Guild M20, I think it was a 67, that came through the Guitar and Amp Center in Harrisonburg. I saw it, I played it, I loved it. I decided to buy a 47 Martin 0017 that had so many terrible issues. It was a guitar that never worked out. But instead, I let the M20 go. So a few years ago when I heard about Guild being resurrected once again, I immediately knew that I wanted to own one of these guitars. Guild is one of the most compelling guitar brands to me. Uh, their story is incredible. So in the 1940s, uh, Epiphone was still in Hoboken, New Jersey. They were making incredible jazz guitars, arch tops, amazing guitars. They were then bought by Gibson. Gibson wanted to move everyone to Kalamazoo, and they moved Epiphone. And Epiphone, the guitar builders, didn't want to move because they were Italian, they were family-oriented, they were deeply rooted in their place, and they decided to stay. And the brand that they made, because they were a guild of guitar builders, was Guild. So for me, there's something about Guild that has always resonated as someone who loves the place that I'm from, bringing about the best work that I can do in a place that I love. I love Guild Guitar. So let's crack this thing open. I wanna play it and I want you to see my absolute first uh, reactions. I actually, I've wanted to play this guitar all day. It showed up earlier today and I have been so excited to play it. So let's open it up, let's check it out. I want you to see me see it. Ooh, ooh, this is... Amazing, um, but oh man, yes. Does that stress you out, me holding it with one hand? Okay, let's open it up. This reminds me a lot of the, um, this case reminds me a lot of the really, oh my gosh, yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this guitar. This case reminds me a lot of the, um, high-end Taylor cases, but this has the Humida case. Let's see if it's still in tune. Nope. 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 But that's crazy to expect. This thing came from California. Just got in here. Look at that. How freaking cool. Has the cream buttons. So this is all mahogany. So this is the E. So this has the LR bags uh, pickup in it. I've wanted to buy one of these guitars for so long. I've wanted to find one used. That's just my style. I don't know. For me, whoever buys first cries first. And uh, I hate turning a dollar into 50 cents. You just lose too much and there are just so many, oh my goodness, there's so many just great guitars out there. So this is my genuine first impression playing this.
moving part. Oh! I'm very happy with this guitar. I will play it so much more for the next couple days, and then I will give you a proper uh, run through of fit, features, options, why I got this guitar, why I love Guild. I think this one's gonna stay with me for a long time, and I think I'll make room uh, out of some of the other stuff. It's been a week. Uh, well, maybe not a week, let's see, that was like, Friday night, it's now a Thursday, so, you know, Baker's, we, nope, aim for a bad pun, didn't make it. They made these in the 60s, they were incredible. There are three all mahogany guitars from the 60s that I think you need to know about. One is very common, you see them all the time. Uh, two is more rare, it's the Guild. And then the third one you never see. So the first one is a Martin 017 or an 015. The most popular player of the 015 is that guy from the Milk Carton Kids, which actually, I just saw that George Grun and Grun Guitars, they're gonna release a, uh, an artist version of that guitar, even though it's a spruce top. Don't get me started on people calling uh, traditionally mahogany guitars, like we're reissuing the 17 series and it's, a and it's a spruce top. The second one is the Guild M20. It is all mahogany, it's a shorter scale, it's a smaller body, it sounds great. The other one is a Favilla. I sold one to my friend Jake here in town uh, 10, 12 years ago, and it is long gone. It's totally out of here, um, and I don't know if I'll ever find one. Maybe Reverb will help me find one of these. I've set up a notification for them, but they're such rare guitars. But uh, they were similar, they were more of a double O, a little bigger than this, but the Favilla was a great guitar. A couple years ago, uh, Tony Policastro, who's become a friend, uh, I was on his channel a couple weeks ago, uh, sharing some tips on how to find the right guitar for you. So Tony, uh, years ago, maybe three years ago, he got a Guild M20 and it immediately made me realize that I wanted one. So I've had this guitar for over a week, so here are my thoughts, comments, some slander, no, I don't really have any slanderous remarks, or do I hang to the end to see? I don't, I might, I don't know. The really important specs and details that you should know is that this is a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. It is an inch and 3 quarter nut. Uh, I had a Guild D40. It was my first good vintage guitar. I owned that guitar when I was 18. I just turned 18, I bought it. Uh, it was terrible, it was so horribly refinished. It needed a neck reset so badly, but because it was a five piece neck, I couldn't get anyone to do a neck reset. I paid $300 for it and I still may have overpaid, but my first vintage guitar was a Guild and there's something so deeply nostalgic and fun uh, about seeing that headstock and it's just, it takes me back to a place of when I was first learning how to play guitar, first learning every day, working full time, learning about guitars and gear. Uh, it just took me to a really fun place every time I've seen this. Um, the other thing is just having such a small, uh, really comfortable guitar, this guitar feels incredibly organic. And when I say that, I mean like it feels like a living thing. It reacts differently the more you play it and the way the different ways that you use it. So what I've, what I've noticed is because it's such a small body and my arm, if I just set my arm on it like I normally would, it's very mellow. Because look, like my, my finger there, just the way my elbow, my wrist and Ergonomically, I fall at the very front end of the sound hole, and it gives you just this like super strumming. But if you move your hand back, it becomes just this bright, wild, wonderful guitar.
only thing I really want to do to it is I want to put a strap button on it. So I want to talk about the fit and the finish and some of the things I like about it. It's still a satin finish. It is a nitrocellulose lacquer finish. This guitar is made in California. Um, it's not a super shiny finish, which is a little different uh, than the ones from the 60s. They were a little more glossy, or maybe they just get shinier as people play them and rub on them and use them. I know that happens with the Martins of similar kinds of finishes. It doesn't feel like they use as much pore fill. Like you can feel the texture of the wood still a little bit through the finish, especially on the neck. The other thing that reminds me so much, and this is just a guild thing and you won't get it unless you've played a good bit of guilds. Guild has a really specific shape to their neck. And what's interesting is, so guild is now owned by Cordoba Musical Instruments. It's not owned by the original owners. It's not like the former Epiphone employees that started their own company and that super compelling uh, story of, of their brand and why they hung around. It's changed, it's morphed, it's bounced around. Um, but Fender did their best to try and ruin Guild uh, like Fender does. I love Fender, but they, they are terrible for acoustic guitars. Even though it's totally different ownership and it's totally changed, they did so much research on what made these guitars great in the 60s, and they brought them into the 21st century. They brought them into a new place where it's a super usable guitar, but they kept things like the look of the headstock and then the feel of the neck. As soon as I picked this guitar up, I was taken back you know, 15 years to when I bought my first vintage guild and it just feels right. It it has incredible work done to it. So like the bone saddle is really well shaped, really well compensated. So the intonation is really good. The nut also is very well cut. It just feels really good. It's the action is low. They asked me how I wanted this guitar to be set up before they sent it out. It's uh, I'll still. I mean, I'm gonna wait a couple months to when it gets to be a little less humid. Even though I've been running the humidity here in the basement, I got a new dehumidifier, so I'm down to 37%. Um, I wanna keep it, you know, 30, 40. Um. But this guitar, it feels like a living thing. It just, it grows with me, grows on me. I have kept this upstairs and every moment I'm able to play guitar, as soon as kids go to bed or as if I'm home for lunch break, if my kids are on a walk um, and I just happen to be at the house, I'm gonna pick this guitar up and I'm gonna play it. So the tuners are, um, they're nickel plated, so they're gonna age really gracefully. They'll eventually become tarnished and cool and old. Uh, the tuners are super smooth, they work really well. I think they're a closer ratio than an 18 to one or 16 to one. I don't know math, I just know that when I turn them they seem to work smoother and a little faster. Um, like that ratio is a little tighter, but I really dig them. And they also look super cool.
I elected um, to go ahead and get one with the pickup in it. So this has an LR bags. Uh, this is the VTC volume tone control. This is the Element. It's a really great pickup, really just straightforward, works every time. Um, but I bought this guitar new. I don't do that. I don't buy new guitars, but I was so curious and so interested in this guitar, both in like the legacy of where Guild comes from. It's a brand that I just resonate with. Uh, people that choose place and family. That's me. Like we, we, we've prioritized our life to be around people that we love and people that we care about and to be deeply planted and to be proud of where we're from and from and to work really hard for the well-being of that place. So I totally appreciate and I get that Guild is no longer in Hoboken. They're in Southern California, they're owned by a corporation, but it's interesting. There's there are graceful ways to transition corporate identities and to translate your brand and there are ungraceful ways. If you are looking for ungraceful ways for your brand, look to Gibson any day of the any day of the week. They are doing something rude and insensitive and uh, tricky and slick and um, not taking care of their dealers, not taking care of other brands, not playing well in the community. Sorry, I've gone on too long for how bad Gibson is as far as the ecosystem of other guitar brands. But uh, Guild has been a great guitar company and they have captured just the mojo and the essence and they've made in the M20 a guitar that is small and comfortable and fun to play, but it's also incredibly dynamic. It sounds very different if you play it differently. It sounds very different in other tunings. Um, the features are great. The finish is wonderful. It's a dovetail joint neck. The construction is great. The materials are great. African mahogany. Uh, I hope you see that a great guitar is more than just its parts. Um, what this guitar will do in me and through me for a long time is really exciting. So I plan on having this guitar for a long time. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I want you to find cool guitars and gear. Guild is an amazing company and I hope that more of you check them out, that they enter onto your short list of guitars that you wanna play, that you wanna know more about. If you wanna support the channel, the best way to do that is to buy a t-shirt. They're super comfortable. I find myself just wearing them because they're comfortable. Um, and they're just wonderful. So if you want to do that, the, the link is in the description below. You can go to jeremythegutarhunter.com. You can buy the shirts there. Uh, you can also buy them at my Reverb store. The other way you can support the channel, make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notifications on below. I try to make helpful videos. I aim for one a week that is beneficial to you, that's entertaining, and it helps you find great guitars that light your soul on fire. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys and gals soon. Mm -hmm.